My name is Patrick O'Connor, Director of Remarketing for Wheels. Um, I've spent uh, the last 30 years in the industry, um, the better part of the last 20 in remarketing specifically, several years in the auction industry as well, operations throughout that entire period. Remarketing is a passion of mine and uh, something I love to do, uh, eat, sleep and breathe every day. Color is, uh, is obviously um, very important to, to people, both uh, in the retail side and from an acquisition side. Um, first and foremost, with our clients, brand recognition is important, right? So that may be a mitigating factor. If your brand recognition supersedes any other influencing choices, that's where you're gonna go to. The two segments that might be you know, directly affected would be the commercial aspect where those colors are more or less accepted or understood. You know, safety reasons, visibility concerns, things of that nature. So high optic colors, yellows, reds, things of that nature um, are very acceptable. Um, white is always a safe color, of course, because you know you can you can alter it and logo it accordingly. Um, but even still, even when it's debadged, it can be rebranded once again for for a secondary use. As it relates to the passenger side of the vehicles, your staple colors are important: um, silvers, whites, blacks, grays. Sell more easily. They're readily available for the retail public. Your reds and blues have so many variables to them that everyone sees them differently. So the blue to you and the blue to me might be something very uniquely different that limits some of the audience in the secondary market, uh, albeit not entirely, but more so than the other colors. I wouldn't say that that would, needs to be a, a part of the total cost of ownership. It should be an influencing factor, something to consider, and, and our selectors are aligned as such that we can preclude certain colors from being orderable at the time of uh, of placement, so those can be uh, excluded out of your selector. Obviously, maintenance first and foremost is a pedigree of the vehicle. Uh, with today's uh, technology and information available to the end user, um, albeit Carfax shows all the history of the vehicle, of course. So, uh, oil change intervals, service maintenance, um, any type of uh, uh, recalls being performed and concluded um, just lends itself to the credibility of the vehicle. Appearance is the other piece, right? So, having a good, uh, strong policy that keeps the vehicles in, in uh, good shape and, and performing uh, from an appearance standpoint uh, makes a significant difference uh, at the end of the vehicle's life. Challenges that happen to the vehicle throughout its life, whether it be a, a damage in a parking lot or on the road surface or something like that, if and when possible, have them you know, completed and, and repaired accordingly uh, so that when it is time to resell um, from an appearance standpoint, uh, cosmetically, the vehicle is fully intact. Sure, any, any price concessions that occur at the front end of the vehicle's uh, inception are, are gonna have a, a profound impact on the, on the back end. Retail consumers, as well as, uh, as the wholesale environment, they're aware and cognizant that those incentives exist, so therefore it has a uh, inert pressure on the back end of the vehicle when it's, uh, when it's time to sell. That being said, it shouldn't preclude somebody from making that decision and acquiring those vehicles because in essence, you're, you're paying for the portion of the vehicle that you wanna use at the time in which you have it. So, um, as a concern on the backside, I wouldn't necessarily place as much emphasis on it, but it is, uh, it is something that does have an influence um, and can change sporadically based on the velocity in which the, the industry is moving, specifically with EVs. Partners in the, uh, in the remarketing industry across all segments uh, are, are working together to align uh, for the future state of the industry. Uh, that being said, um, you know one of the things that uh, uh, they're preparing for is the onset and influx of EVs into the into the uh, industry. The vehicles are a little bit uh, heavier than the traditional ICE vehicle, um, so therefore transportation is impacted. Uh, space on the uh, on the transporters themselves, uh, service and maintenance lifts have to be accommodated to uh, to prepare for the weight of uh, of the EVs that are that are entering into the marketplace. Um, and then awareness, the technology that's coming for uh, battery health is uh, is going to be prolific. It's going to be uh, industry changing, it's going to be uh, impactful to our, our clients and our, and our customers at the bottom line in terms of having a healthy battery throughout the vehicle's life will subsequently return uh, the investment on the backside at time of resale. The technology that's in, in the vehicles today obviously is, is far more expansive than we've seen in, 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 uh, in the history of the automotive industry. So um, from, uh, from a repair standpoint, from a, uh, from a safety standpoint, they're obviously uh, value added but there's costs associated with it. So minor impacts um, can subsequently be uh, a bit more costly because of the sensors that are uh, located within the vehicle's uh, perimeter. So your front your rear bumpers, uh, your uh, lane departures, um, any of those types of components, uh, they, they start to add up if you have uh, even a small or minor uh, damage to the vehicle. Wheels has a, uh, a multifaceted approach and, and we're not exclusive to just the auction uh, arena, but. Uh, 
you know, we offer a program to our, our to the drivers and employees of our customers, uh, which is the first and foremost offering. Um, it gives the employees and the clients a, uh, an opportunity to, to provide a benefit that otherwise might not exist, particularly in a segment that has a, uh, a shortage in the industry. The secondary approach would then be to the grounding or delivering dealer. Um, there's an opportunity there for the dealer when they are rendering the new vehicle at time of delivery uh, to review and inspect the vehicle prior to it arriving at auction and make an offer on the vehicle, um, knowing that it is a top tier, top notch vehicle being offered to them. And then subsequently thereafter, uh, the vehicle will flow into the wholesale market arena, which um, affords us the opportunity to sell the many. That gives uh, the vehicle the maximum exposure in a fully digital marketplace uh, and truly a global audience is looking at those assets for purchase. Uh, today was uh, today happened to be Johnny Cash, actually. And uh, it varies from, uh, from segment to segment, uh, time of day, day of the week, and, uh, and just mood of the uh, presence. But uh, yeah, I try to span all genres. Um, I think uh, as I started to grow up, um, you know, I went from rock and, and metal and, and into uh, uh, country and blues and um, uh, various other genres right now. So there's a blended mix. And some of the crossovers I really enjoy too, the collaborative efforts between two different uh, uniquely identifiable artists. I think that is just fascinating how they're able to bring some of that together. Please uh, please try to follow us on LinkedIn. That's that's first and foremost, um, as well as the, our YouTube channel. If you subscribe to the channel, you're gonna get timely content and, and uh, routine updates as well. And uh, as we like to say here at Wheels, together, let's go far.